50 years later, the Falcon Lake incident is Canada's best documented UFO case. It's no secret that much of the global population is fascinated by UFOs, as these three letters comprise one of the most searched for terms on Google today. Many governments have also now released countless pages of previously classified documents pertaining to UFOs, revealing their interest in this subject and the process. The most viewed file in the FBI vault is actually about flying saucers. Perhaps this is why Hillary Clinton was so enthusiastic about the UFO phenomenon, or perhaps it was simply a ploy to win more votes, knowing just how many American citizens actually take the subject very seriously, as they should. As longtime Bigelow Aerospace executive Mike Gold, now director of Washington Operations for Space Systems Laurel, said when asked about Bigelow Aerospace's involvement with UFOs, he finds the subject's matter very interesting. He mentions a congressional hearing where scientists emphasize that the universe is teeming with life. He goes on to state that he cannot comment on what Bigelow Aerospace does with UFO reports, but is glad that somebody is taking the reports because these are important issues that deserve serious attention. In a recent interview with 60 Minutes, Robert Bigelow, founder of the Bigelow Aerospace Corporation, stated that he is aware of an intelligent extraterrestrial presence visiting the planet. You can see that clip and read more about it here. These files are extensive, and lend further credibility to a statement made by the former head of the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, Roscoe. Behind the scenes, high-ranking Air Force officers are soberly concerned about UFOs. But through official secrecy and ridicule, many citizens are led to believe that the unknown flying objects are nonsense. Perhaps this is why UFOs were made into such joke by the mainstream. And it makes me wonder, what else has been ridiculed so much by the mainstream that people now feel ashamed or even stupid for sharing their alternative perspective about it? Hill and Coetter is joined by hundreds of other high-ranking people who are coming forward to discuss this topic, like Dr. Edgar Mitchell, the sixth man to walk on the moon, and Herman Oberth, the founding father of modern rocketry. Given just how many people have risked their careers and reputations to get the truth out there, we can no longer dismiss this as a conspiracy theory. The above information is a quick summary of what's out there, and what we can decipher from credible sources with verified backgrounds, but the subject goes far deeper. If you're dealing with this topic, there's always the next question. First it was, are UFOs real? Now the question has become, who's operating them? Are some of them extraterrestrial, and if so, have they ever made contact? There are objects in our atmosphere which are technically miles in advance of anything we can deploy, that we have no means of stopping them coming here, and, that there is a serious possibility that we are being visited and have been visited for many years by people from outer space, from other civilizations. That it behooves us, in case some of these people in the future or now should turn hostile, to find out who they are where they come from, and what they want. This should be the subject of rigorous scientific investigation and not the subject of rubbishing by tabloid newspapers. Lord Admiral Hill Norton, former Chief of Defense Staff, five-star Admiral of the Royal Navy, Chairman of the NATO Military Committee. There have in fact been face-to-face -face meetings with extraterrestrials. Paul Hellier, former Canadian Defense Minister. There are even intriguing stories of many who supposedly channel extraterrestrial beings, and what makes it so interesting is, at least for me as a UFO researcher, seeing the corroboration and confirmations between stories, as well as what appears to be possible misinformation and manipulation. A great example comes from the 1959 George King account, which you can read more about here, which is one of many genuine accounts that were confirmed years later. This particular case relates to nuclear weapons and the extraterrestrial presence. So, where are they? Well, Elon Musk has publicly stated his belief that there are most definitely superintelligent extraterrestrials out there. He also said that if they do exist, they're probably already observing us and that we're just not smart enough to realize it. With all of this information coming out, fewer people face ridicule for speaking out and this is a good sign. Canada Contact Just as with UFOs, 
There are countless stories and documents discussing the possibility of actual extraterrestrial bodies. For example, here's a story we wrote about an FBI document, which you can view in the article, dealing with how some alien bodies look, where they come from, and how their crafts operate. When it comes to individual accounts, there's no shortage of those as well. Whether it be more than 60 children in Zimbabwe witnessing a large craft and non-humanoid beings, or a Catholic historian witnessing a 10-foot-tall humanoid extraterrestrial, accounts come from people of all backgrounds, ages, education levels, and walks of life. Along with alleged contact stories, the CBC, a major mainstream news network, recently covered the story of a man named Stefan Michalak who was involved in a UFO incident in Manitoba. According to Stefan's son, Stan Michalak, who co-authored a new book detailing his father's encounter titled When They Appeared, I recalled seeing him in bed. He didn't look good at all. He looked pale, haggard. When I walked into the bedroom there was a huge stink in the room, like a real horrible aroma of sulfur and burnt motor. It was all around and it was coming out of his pores. It was bad. Above you can see the burn marks left from the encounter. Stefan is of many who have had this type of evidence left on their body after an alleged encounter. Below is a sketch done by Stefan of the craft he encountered. On May 20, 1967, he says he saw two cigar-shaped objects with a reddish glow hovering about 45 meters away. As the CBC article tells, one descended, according to Stefan's account, landing on a flat section of rock and taking on more of a disc shape. The other remained in the air for a few minutes before flying off. Believing it to be a secret U.S. military experimental craft, Stefan sat back and sketched it over the next half hour. Then he decided to approach, later recalling the warm air and smell of sulfur as he got closer, as well as a whirring sound of motors and a hissing of air. Stefan also said he saw a door open on the side with bright lights inside, and said he heard voices muffled by the sounds from the craft during the encounter. He described the ship as being made of smooth metal and equipped with panels of several different colored flashing lights. Eventually, he says, as he walked close enough to the craft to touch it, it began to turn counterclockwise, and then, all of a sudden, he was struck in the chest by a blast of air or gas that pushed him backward and set his shirt and cap ablaze. You can see the shirt above. This is very reminiscent of the famous Travis Walton incident. After Stefan made it back to civilization, he was treated at a hospital for burns to his chest and stomach that later turned into raised sores on a grid-like pattern. And for weeks afterwards, he suffered from diarrhea, headaches, blackouts and weight loss. Information coming from the black budget world, as well as from previously classified documents and whistleblower testimony, is painting an interesting picture. But perhaps all of this, along with revelations in other areas that surround the human experience, health, finance, education, food, is happening because the human race, as a collective, is finally taking notice. More questions about the human experience are being asked every day and we are starting to pay attention to exactly what is going on here. It's not an easy task, but one thing is nevertheless clear, we are not being presented the full picture. We are in a time where the human race is starving for information, yet lacking a credible source to give it to them. But things are changing, so hang on to your hats.